Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party are back to trying to smear the Conservative Party with the use of their propaganda arm, the CBC. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Today, the CBC and Radio Canada released an article. Paul Leib's office maintains tight control over the, what the Conservative MPs say and do. Of course, we are all remember when the caucus revolted against Trudeau a couple of weeks back and that he wouldn't let any of them speak at the microphone. And so the far left has this tendency rather than, I guess they know that it's impossible for them to achieve another standard, right? To achieve the standard that the conservatives seem to be setting. So instead what they want to do is lower where the conservatives are. They want to bring, they want to bring the conservatives down to their level which is exactly what we see here. We, we see them trying to make you think that somehow, like it, the, the article reads like some sort of wet dream from the far left, right? Where they're making it up, sitting around drinking wine one night and they're deciding, oh, wouldn't it be great if he were this kind of person and wouldn't it be great if he were that kind of person and that's what I believe will happen. And you can you can see how their minds work simply in the, in the article's title. But this person who's actually a reporter for CBC uh, Radio Canada, Christian Noel, wrote this piece and he said that, you know, everybody was named, and nobody was named, they were all anonymous. The article starts out, after two years of Pierre Polyev as their leader, many conservative MPs say they are much less free now than they were before his arrival. The same far left people will say that Pierre Polyev has been in the party for years, longer than, right, 20 years, they'll say. So I really believe that they would have had a flavor of what he was like long before they elected him, right? Because there was an interim leader, there was a whole election. Anyway, normally loquacious conservatives close up like oysters and dare not speak without their leader's approval. MPs are watched by conservative staffers both inside and outside of parliament. Everybody is being watched. What we say, what we do, and who we talk to, we're told not to fraternize with MPs from other parties, and that's not normal. A conservative party source. They even want to make you put it in quotes. And they're like, oh, it's a conservative party source. Really. What I, what I think is amazing is how we all know that everybody on the far left, the liberals have said a thousand times they won't, well, they won't even talk to the conservatives, they won't work with the conservatives, nothing like that. I mean, every MP, all the cabinet members, they've all said that. We also know that people on the far left get very tribal. They won't talk to you at all if you don't agree 100% with the way that they think. By contrast, the people on the right will accept your position as long as you understand that they don't agree with you. Somehow they want you to think that they are climbing up like oysters and are not allowed to fraternize. I don't believe for one second that there's a single sitting member of the NDP or the Liberal Party that would willingly have a coffee with a person from the Conservative Party. Never mind that the individual from the Conservative Party willing to, like, let's just say for the sake of argument, they all wanted to have coffee with them. Name me one Liberal or NDP that would willingly do that. But this, is, this article is not about the truth. This article is about the propaganda, about trying to lower Pierre Polyev so that Justin Trudeau doesn't look so bad, right? So he doesn't look like such a, a horrible tyrant. Mr. Noel goes on to say that the conservatives' words and actions are scrutinized by the leader's office. Partisanship is encouraged. Fraternizing with elected officials from other parties is a no-no, which I doubt very much. Those who follow the rules are rewarded. What are they getting, lollipops in there, bud? Is that what you want me to believe? There are always multiple people in the penalty box. There's always someone in trouble, a caucus member said. Again, nobody naming names, right? He's just some fake monster under the bed. It's the, it's the, vill it's the monster in the closet. It's this, you know, the boogeyman around the corner. It's the, the implied threat. They've been trying to convince you of this since forever because that's the only tactic that they have. They don't have any proof. They don't have any reality. The simple fact is, is that they have to make it up. They have to, this, this would have been better off as a fiction story. Of course, you can't convince the CBC that this is the reason why nobody watches them, right? The people that they all have in charge over there, all their 
reporters, all of their anchors, all of their managers, which they got, what, 75 or something, can't get them to understand because they're not media people. They are people who think that they can control you with the media. They're not people who are trying to bring you the news, which, of course, is a big difference, right? There's a huge difference between propaganda and a reporter. Though when you look at the CBC calling themselves reporters, I can see how you might get confused. Now, this reporter, Noel, claims that he spoke with a dozen elected representatives, a dozen uh-huh, employees and members of the Conservative Party of Canada from three different provinces. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> I mean, I guess, you know, Pierre Polyev probably has a, a tight grip on them with all of this traveling around the country by car that he does. <laughs> and a man who's trying to get to, you know, bring things to Canadians is going to be what? Fixated on. <laughs> I mean, there's just no, there's just nothing about it that makes any sense, you know? If the leader invents a new slogan, we will all have to use it, said a conservative source catchphrases deployed by Polyev in the House of Commons and at media events and terms of derision like wacko and radical, ju just inflation and sellout sing are often picked up and repeated by conservative MPs. Take, for example, the word wacko. Polyev was expelled from the House of Commons in April for using the word and refusing to withdraw a marks and it made, uh, he made about Trudeau. Before that incident, the term had been used twice in the House of Commons in the previous 18 months. In the months since, the Conservatives have repeated it more than 100 times. Yep. And yesterday, when, when Pierre, or the day before, when Pierre Polyev wasn't even in the House, they said the word fraud, fake, and phony probably 60, 70 times. Just like the Liberals will stand up and repeat the same word over and over again. They will all run around and say money in your pocket, hand, pockets, hands in your pockets, 8 out of 10, 8 out of 10, 8 out of 10. I think that if the Conservatives find something that works, when they do their polling, they stick with it. But I don't imagine this fella can understand that. I think that he's used to being disciplined. He's not used to playing on a team. Now, I wanted to draw this one to a, to a specific attention of you all because I really think that this is something that we can, we can all agree on. It's radio silence at the entrance to the Conservative Caucus meetings these days. Every Wednesday morning, journalists throw questions at arriving MPs. Almost all of them pass without answering. Some avoid making eye contact with journalists. MPs from the other side seldom hesitate to answer the journalist's questions, and when Aaron O'Toole and Andrew Shearla, the Conservatives, many Conservative MPs stop by to chat with the reporters every Wednesday. What's the difference, I wonder, between when they were in the House and now? Well, it's a lot to do with the fact that Justin Trudeau and the far left have purchased the press. So Justin Trudeau will have a scandal after scandal after scandal after scandal, and the CBC will say absolutely nothing about it. Yet Pierre Polyev stops on the side of a highway and there's a random tiny little bumper sticker and the CBC goes bananas. This is the same thing I just said a little while ago. They're not stopping to talk to you, not because they don't want to have a microphone to speak into, but because you're not trustworthy. You cannot be trusted. This article, this entire article is proof that you can't be trusted. They got nothing to hide from you. They're always online talking into the microphone. They are talking to reach. They have a greater reach than the CBC could ever. The, the CBC would love to have the kind of interaction that Pierre Polyev has. They would love to have the kind of following that Melissa Lansman gets. But they don't. Of course not. And I mean, there's a, there's a lot of interaction that the conservative members get. The CBC gets 12 people that watch their story and they're all, you know, diehard they're probably employees. So it's kind of, uh, it's a bit weak. And I can see now with, between this and the other th t things that are happening this week, that it's just an all out attempt to try and take the heat off of the Liberal Party and all of their corruption, all of their uh, mismanagement and theft of our monies, frauds, 
the lies, you know, and they think that they can just say, oh, look, Pierre Polyev walks past the scrum and doesn't say anything. Well, treat them the same way you treat the liberals or treat the liberals the same way you treat the conservatives. And you will find that the conservatives will speak to you if they're getting a fair shake. They just know that they're not going to. So why would they waste their breath? The article goes on and on, talks about how they're all being viewed and being watched. But I find this one part funny. Polyev's press attache was seen, was spotted jotting down names of the conservative MPs attending the press gallery dinner last spring. So two things I want to say about that. The first one is what you want me to believe is what he was outside like, you know, spies are us and he was just writing down names. These that he, he couldn't remember. And also, uh, have you ever watched a press conference with Finance Minister Freeland? Whenever a reporter asks her a question, she makes a, a point of writing down their name. She's obvious about it. She takes a pen and a paper, she writes down their name, and she looks them dead in the eye. Because she knows, they know, the reporters know, that if they ask her a question that's out of line, there's going to be ramifications and repercussions. Of course there is. The far left doesn't have any freedom in it. Everybody knows that. There's no freedom in Marxism. Like I told you, they're not, it's not that they're, it's not, they know Justin Trudeau can never achieve this. They know that the, the, they don't, they, the far left cannot achieve the level, the standards that the conservative party is shooting for. So they need to try and bring down, right? The, the conservative party, personal discipline. Paul, Yev imposes iron discipline on himself. He works hard and he works late. We've been telling him for months he needs to take a vacation, but he just won't listen. One source said. He's the one who decides everything. His main advisor is himself. The people around him are only there to realize the leader's vision. I think that this uh, uh, Christian Noel has a bit of a fixation. Might have a bit of a bro crush on uh, Pierre Polyev. Because he's looking at his the way that he behaves, he's comparing him to Justin Trudeau, and he's saying, oh my gosh, this guy is always on the go. It's go, 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 energy, 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 energy. Whereas Justin Trudeau is, uh, I mean, takes more time off in a year than, than somebody with, you know, 35 years experience at a unionized outfit. But somehow that, that, that threatens the left. I mean, this this article is not even subtle in its attempt to just try to lie <laughs> right to you. And then in the end of the day, they will all tell themselves they don't understand why they're, they, they don't get any stats, why nobody's watching them online, why nobody's watching them on the TV. They actually will say to themselves, why is nobody listening to the radio? They will say that to themselves. This is the kind of trite that they, they produce, and they're, they're wondering why they can't convince people to listen to them. Now it falls apart on them. There's like, there are several recent examples of conservatives being called out by Polyev. In November 2024, 17 conservative MPs who pleaded with the government to ensure that their cities and their ridings received their share of federal housing fund were publicly re rebuked by the leader's office in a news release distributed to the media without their consent. Yeah, yeah. Polyev said, they say, forced them to renege on their commitment to the mayors. Now, there's a pro couple of problems with that because I am well versed in the housing accelerator fund. One of the biggest problems is that the they don't have to go through the MP. The the federal government tries to work directly with the mayor. That's how they got a couple of places like Calgary and Alberta. They're not using the the federal or even the provincial. They're going directly to the source because they know they can't. Right. However, what you what what everybody doesn't want to understand is the the brilliance of it. Because the Liberal Party was avoiding all conservative writings. And so the conservatives collectively said, hey, what about us? You got to notice us. Now, of course, the Liberal Party will not notice them. And so now they have all the fodder that they need to say, hey, you can say whatever you want. We tried to talk to the Liberal government. If you want to get you know, this, these problems fixed, elect us. Because they are treating you differently by the way that you vote. They are discriminated against you because you're a conservative or because you're, you live in a conservative writing. That's why it went away so quietly, guys. That's why. That's why that they, they they stood up in the house and they said it, and then all of us like Sean Fraser said it, and then all of a sudden, five minutes later, crickets. Because it was a ploy that the conservatives used to to prove that the federal government is picking and choosing 
who gets to be looked after. There's no equality in the way that they are looking after this money, this money that does nothing. Of course, there's no truth to the article. There's just supposition and innuendo, which is always the only tactic that the far left has on in their uh, repertoire. That's what they always do. They just try to make you think that something might be true, and then they hope that your imagination will run away with it. If you're looking for proof is in the pudding, let's look at the fact that nobody has ever called into question his leadership, that this is the first time I'm ever hearing about it. And these are people with strong media social presences that can say whatever they want when nobody's looking. I think that this reporter just lives in a world of, you know, sort of discipline and, and contradiction and, you know, submission and things of that nature. And, and it, it's for his mind it, all of this makes perfect sense and that he's hoping that his readers or his listeners will agree with him because he sees that kind of behavior in the liberal party on the far left. He sees that kind of behavior in the NDP party. And rather than try to say, Hey, those people shouldn't be behaving that way. He tries to say, well, the conservatives do it too. I don't believe for one second that the conservatives do it too, because there's, I've seen Pierre Paulia take questions from people who he doesn't agree with. I have never seen Justin Trudeau do that. I have seen Pierre Paul. You have to take questions from reporters he knows are trying to, um, that are out to get him. I have never seen P uh, Justin Trudeau do that. Never, not even once. Or Jagmeet Singh. They don't allow any of the independent media into their uh, press. Justin Trudeau, Jagmeet Singh. However, by contrast, Pierre Paul Yev allows all kinds of independent media. He is forever taking questions from independent media depending on what region he's in, but he doesn't bar them from entering the premises, unlike the Liberal Party and unlike the NDP, who bans them from coming in, who sends their security after the free press and blocks them from entering the premises. Wrap your mind around that. All right. My official position is that I don't believe a single solitary word in that article. I do, however, want to thank you for listening. I will talk to you next time.